today on Check 2 Studios. We're going to be talking about shot reverse shot. We're going to be talking about managing exterior elements and dudes in whitey tighties. Stay tuned. Remember, you can watch this on YouTube on the Check 2 Studios channel. And if you could do us a huge favor and rate and subscribe. You're now listening to the Check 2 Studio podcast with your hosts, Austin and Trevor, bringing you the latest in video marketing and production. All right. So what do we have going on? I have to tell you, man, I am beat. I had a same day edit on Saturday, which you were present for to assist in shooting. And I had one on Sunday, which you were not present for. So I'm coming off of two back to back 12, 13 hour days and I am beat. But the only thing keeping me going are those brown spots and how excited I am to tell the listeners all about it. If it weren't for that, I would be asleep right now. Oh, yeah. That, those beautiful brown spots. So let's let's lay the groundwork. We had an owner who reached out to us, and they wanted to film a TV commercial, a TV spot. And they had an idea that was a little bit off the reservation, as I call it. And they'd, they'd already worked. They'd already seen three or four other video production companies, and he didn't feel like any of them could get it done. We had a meeting. We worked the idea, and I want you to talk about that process, Austin, kind of massage it into what is going to be the 38-second version we're going to show today, uh, and then ultimately there's a 30-second version that's going to be for TV. So so talk about that. So um, like you said, we had an, an owner. You're referencing a business owner, the owner of East Coast Irrigation, in fact. Um, he owns an uh, – sp- it's like sprinklers, right, irrigation. You're bringing right. water to the grass. The grass wants water, and – then when the grass is grown, you gotta you gotta scape it. You've gotta landscape it, and they also do that as well. And this guy's run TV ads before, but they've always been the ones where he buys the airtime, and the local TV station kind of puts together something where it's kind of it's really more like a picture. Maybe there's a little bit of video, but it has like the name of the business and a voice saying like "Call East Coast Irrigation." But he wanted a more creative narrative style piece, and that's what we put together. And he had a concept. And he's a real funny guy, by the way. Um, really cool guy, actually. I like him a lot. He um, he had the idea of, of uh, having guys in their underwear, whitey tidy style underwear, with brown spots. But instead of talking about the brown spots in their underwear, they would be talking about the brown spots on their lawn, uh, emphasizing the need for his service. That's right. So he... Um, uh, he didn't really have a script. He, he just knew that he wanted that, that word play in there. And he said, you guys are the experts, and I'm going to let you guys kind of put that together. So you go ahead and uh, <clears throat> go go back to your, your whiteboards or whatever you guys do. That's what he told us, and come up with something. So we went back for a couple of weeks, and you know, I kind of was playing around with different ideas, and I came up with this. I came back. I told you about it. Um, you thought that it was a great play on his idea, and then we went and pitched it back to him. And he was super happy and super relieved because he had talked to a few other production companies that he told the idea to. And then they would come back. He told them the idea about the brown spots in the underwear. They would go back and they would come back to him and they're like, oh, well, now I have like this Western motif. And they, you know, there's going to be tumbleweeds and that's why you need irrigation. And he's like, well, what happened to my idea about the underwear? And they said, yeah, I'm not doing that. But then we came along and we're like, yeah, we'll do it. And not only will we do it, we'll do the hell out of it. And that's how we got the job. Trevor, you take it from there. Yeah. So once you had the plan and I saw it was, it's an all exterior shoot, there's a lot of challenges to solve and make sure that the day could go as successfully as possible to get the shoot done effectively and to the standards that we always expect. And when you go all exterior, there's just so many things that can go wrong. So many variables between noise, which we faced, lighting, weather, other people just being around. And then when you add semi nudity, as I'll call it, and you'll see in uh, some of the behind the scenes, it can just be a recipe for disaster. And, and I had nightmares. I knew that we had to be there really early. We wanted to get that golden hour and we didn't want to be shooting at high noon. So we had to start very early. I set my alarm for 4 AM, but I was up at two 30 because I just couldn't sleep. I wanted to make sure we got this done before, you know, the, the sunrise really hit a a point that was just going to make everything look awful. So I'd love to dive into it. And then I got a lot of behind the scenes. We had a lot of help on set. Thank goodness. And um, let me reference a little bit about finding talent for something as, I don't know, as delicate as this. Well, let me stop you right there. Okay. For the people that are watching this on YouTube, 
there is an interview with the lead actress. So, um, but it is only included in the podcast version of the show because there's no video component. And we just felt that if we put that into the YouTube video, it would just kind of slow things down. But it will be in, if you go to iTunes, you go to any of the other... Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere you listen to... Um, to podcast, to podcast, you will be able, be able to, to find it. Just search check two studios, find it there. So on that note, I did talk a little bit about the casting process with her. Cause Trevor, you haven't even listened to the interview that we had. So we do go into that a little bit there. And I just wanted to let you know about that before you say whatever it is you're about to say, go. Okay. The main thing I was going to reference is our talent. I call him Mr. Brown Spots. He's the one that's going to be wearing the tidy whities We don't have an interview with him. We don't have an interview with him. That's actually a good idea. Maybe we'll do that before the podcast goes live. I don't know. And he's got his own podcast. He has his own podcast. He actually runs a podcast studio that's local podcasts in our area. Anyway, this was a challenging piece. We talked to a lot of different people, even our regular actors. And it's not that they didn't want to do it and be in their underwear, but some of their wives would not allow them to be shown in their underwear on TV. And and you're talking about one of our actors that we use quite frequently, but he did make it into the piece as an Easter egg. And we'll go over that <laughs> when the time comes. But it was just one of those things we had to plan for. And I, this is one of the nightmares I was worried about that he was going to get cold feet and just be too scared or worried to show up too nervous. But the opposite of that actually happened. But the opposite. He crushed it. He exceeded my expectations as a he, – he had some experience performing but not necessarily in a production like this. And he did amazing. And so – I don't, I don't know. I think maybe we need to show it. It's a short piece before we talk too much more about how we did it. Maybe we should show the right. 38 everybody's, second version. Everybody's looking at this blank screen over here, wondering <laughs> what these brown spots, what did they do with Heidi Whitey's brown spots and a sprinkler company? We're going to show you right now without further ado, drum roll brown, brown spots. spots. You've got brown spots. No, no, your lawn. Your lawn has brown spots. Don't worry, my husband, he had brown spots, and then I called East Coast Irrigation. They took care of everything, and now I can water my lawn right from my phone. Oh, man. I love it. Before we go into kind of lighting it and all these frames, I think we got to we gotta talk about the audio and some of the sound design because it's really, that's what's coming through to me and especially I think the podcast listeners. So tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, the, about the sound design? Yeah. Okay. So are you referring to like the car driving? Let's just take it from the beginning. I added some audio of this car. It's not real. And you can hear it fading. Yeah, I kind of panned it off to the direction it was moving. And that sound of the paper hitting is the actual, it's actually just the camera audio. It sounded fine. I said I was going to look for it or record some Foley, but somebody was actually in here while I was editing. They're like, oh, that's a good piece of sound for that. I'm like, that's just the camera audio. But I was super close. Um, Sir. Okay, uh, that, I think now that might be something you want to talk about. So you see she's coming up and she says, sir, sir. That's not what the original script read. We actually gave this character a name. In fact, we used the actor's real name, which is Jesse, and she's actually saying Jesse. So if you look close at her lips when she says "Sir," well, let me back it up. Sir. So for the uh, for the people listening, it's a woman walking up to a gentleman who's you can see him from kind of the shoulders up, so you can tell he's not wearing a shirt, but you can't tell much else. And she's walking towards the camera, and she's saying "Sir." Sir, and he's just kind of oblivious. He doesn't notice. Um, and for those of you watching, if you watch close, and she says, Sir, sir, she was actually saying Jesse on set. So we actually had to do a little bit of ADR on this, but she's far away, and the focus is on him. So it wasn't really hard. We didn't have any trouble lining up sir. the lip motions. Sir? And then she says, sir, again here, which is also where she, uh, she, where she said Jesse. And uh, for the listeners, she's actually not on screen even at this point. It's just a close-up of the uh, guy's hand picking up the paper. So, again, no problem of syncing it up. It just goes right over uh, that clip. You've got brown spots. And then that's where we actually have on-set dialogue. So the sir, sir is um, 
ADR, and then we go right on to actual uh, audio caught on set, and I think it's pretty seamless. Sir, you've got brown spots. Yeah, you can't even tell that that other sir was recorded at another time. And this is where the gag comes in, because obviously, like you mentioned, he's not wearing a shirt, but now we get the first wide where he's looking around, and you see he's in white and tidies. Yep, yep. So basically, um, the joke is that you don't see him in his full form until she says, you've got brown spots. And then it cuts to this wide, and he, you're now seeing him from about uh, mid calf up, wearing nothing but tidy whites. He's you got brown spots, and immediately, for the listeners, he goes looking at his underwear and kind of like searching, like frantically, like, oh, geez, do I have brown spots on my underwear? And then she says, of course, Oh no, your lawn, your lawn has brown spots. There's like some little comedy, like tings and cartoon sound effects. They they go around. So this brings me to uh, well, we'll come back for this. Actually. Yeah, we'll come back. Have brown spots, and then I called East Coast Irrigation. They took care of everything, and now I can water my lawn right from my phone. So that's the last bit of sound design is that little boop when she touches a phone. Right from my phone. So yeah, I just went into my library of sounds, found a little beeping sound, put that in because this is actually just a photo of the app this isn't really the app and we had some trouble with the actual app it kept wanting to load and do other things and that wouldn't necessarily be a great advertisement for her, this app if it was doing all this loading and weird stuff so he we said well let's just get a picture of it and right after she touches it you can kind of you know her camera roll comes up for just one frame and you can kind of see like okay this is just a photo in her camera roll but um it's not long enough to see what it is, and it does show that the phone changes when she touches the button. So it actually worked out pretty good. Yeah. Um, we toyed around with the idea of doing a screen replacement and this and that, and with the budget we're on and the time frame that this is that we were under, I said, well, if I can get a good clean shot of the phone without any reflections and save myself the headache of doing a screen replacement, I'll do it. I aimed the camera, and it ended up being, because there's houses right behind us kind of blocking the main sunlight, uh, it was very easy to get this very clean shot of the actual phone screen, so we didn't have to do that. And then, and then these sprinklers are uh, also sound effects. And to continue the gag, you see her husband also in whitey tidies because, like, that's the thing. Everybody leaves their house to get their paper and read their paper in whitey tidies. Exactly. So what happens is she says that she can water her lawn right from her phone, and she demonstrates to our main guy. And as soon as she hits the button, we're instantly transported back to wherever her house is in the world. And her husband's out on the lawn in whitey tidies. I think there's like an undertone of this in this commercial that all men are just kind of like these big uh, sloths that kind of sloth around in their whitey tidies. They kind of uh, m- they kind of hobble out of bed and get out there and check the paper. And they're like, it's like a caveman. So it's funny. Like her husband's out there doing the exact same thing this guy was doing. Kind of showing like, hey, aren't we all the same? Trevor, aren't we all the same? Yeah. And that's why we all need to get East Coast Irrigation. So let's continue talking about the audio while we're on it. Uh, One of the first challenges when you're outside, there's a lot of things you cannot control that are sounds in the environment. And if it's early enough, there's not as much activity, but there, as the sun comes up, there are cars driving, there are, we had everything. We had planes, trains, automobiles, birds, uh, dogs. Then the lawnmower started on, and most of the audio we captured with a pretty affordable um, overhead shotgun. Oh, let's not sugarcoat this. We used the cheapest mics available. <laughs> no, we didn't. No, we used a Rode Video Mic Pro. But for we also used a lavalier mic on her to try to because she's the only one with lines. However, that did not end up panning out. So you'll actually see. Yeah, I was. This is you putting the lavalier on, which ended up sounding terrible like you really gotta you know that takes like some real doing you gotta have real high quality stuff you almost need a set a dedicated guy who knows what he's doing when it comes to doing these things Mm -hmm. and we didn't have that and it was really more of like a backup because we knew we're going to be booming in and we always know that worst 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 case scenario we could do adr even though you know that's you know to get that right takes a lot of uh patience and you know finesse so we didn't want to do that but we knew that we might end up having to but we ended up getting pretty clean audio out of the Rode video mic pro it's very audible you can hear everything that's said 
And uh, after this shoot, we decided, what do we decide, Trevor? We're going on. We're going to upgrade. Yeah. Got to upgrade it. It's Beyonce. We're moving to something more industry standard for, you know, with a, you know, a shotgun with a blimp and all that stuff. And we already have decent audio recorders to use all that stuff with. But, you know, as, you know, as we say, we're, a, we're a fledgling little video company starting up doing yeah. big projects, being very ambitious, are we, if Yoda were to say it. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're doing. So we have new mics coming. But since Trevor is saying that, this is Trevor over there. Uh, laving her, her up, laving her and up, I, and, and the way I laughed her up was probably not the best way. Really, probably it was on her coat. What it really should have probably been is between, I don't know, on her chest there, because then there's less movement. Are you afraid to say between her boobs? I between believe. her boobs, yeah. So that's where it probably should have been. Well, since we didn't end up using the lav mic, that didn't make it into the commercial. Let's yeah. just move on. Um, so now that you've seen the the whole thing. This is us arriving on site right here. This is me in the 5.30. No, it wasn't. Well, it's probably about 6 at this point. We got to the yeah. office around 5.30 and started gathering, and this is around 6. This is uh, our buddy Justin, and he'll be excited to be mentioned in the podcast because he is a listener, yep. and uh, he's joining the crew. Like he's in the, he's in the early phases of joining up. So he did uh, – he did a lot of these behind the scenes photos. So you probably won't be seeing him again because he'll be behind the camera. Yep. I took this photo, but mm -hmm. uh, he'll be taking over as I get to work. And he does video work. He's done some videos on his own and he's uh, talented and uh, photo and video. He does photos. Uh, well, we won't get into it, but he does photos and makes money doing that. So yeah, yeah he's a good guy. Like that guy. And he lives right across the street from the place where we shoot a lot of videos. So that makes it convenient. Actually, his house is in this as well. Yes. His house is the husband. But um But he was so and then let's let's move on. This is our this is our guy. Talent, Jesse. Yep. I, I actually I wasn't thinking and I just the night before I was like, Oh Jesse, bring a robe. I think you'll be a lot more comfortable because oh, yeah. you're gonna be naked for most of the shoot. So uh that was good. Yes indeed. So there he is, that the man, the myth, the legend. The Jesse Mr. Hall Brown spots, and he crushed it. I have to say, he doesn't have any lines, which actually is harder. He, uh, you know, he had to, to do all the physical acting. So, um, in in uh, mind of being as brief as we can, so we can get out here and get some dinner. Let's move right along. The first shot of the day is a drone shot. This is an establishing shot. We're setting a few things up for the piece. For instance, the newspaper, the reason, the motivation for brown spot man to come out of his house right we have to motivate the character out but we also want to set up that hey there might be this other person showing up so we've got her showing up right over here so if i back up and show you the the shot this first shot kind of sets all the moving pieces up we've got the car coming we've got the newspaper going onto uh the driveway and we've got her coming right along so uh yeah we did that establishing shot with the drone so here's me kind of piloting the drone. Trevor was piloting the drone, but I started getting picky, and he said, you just do it. So just frame okay. it how you want. Let's get it done. Well, and, you know, really, um, the way the way our directing process is, like we usually call me the director, um, but really we're a directing team because Trevor's directing the actors a lot too. Like he'll he'll call out suggestions from the side, you know, he'll, he'll, you know, say things to me if he thinks I'm doing something that's stupid. He's like, what are you doing? You know, is that underexposed over, you know, just whatever. And so we really, you know, we kind of call me the director and the DP and we kind of call him a producer and like, you know, somebody that's kind of gluing the schedule together, lining other things up, but really we're a directing team. He directs the actors a lot on set as well. Um, but in this case, I, I kind of had a vision for the drone shot and communicating it quickly was not going to happen. So in the spirit of getting the best product possible, Trevor just shoved it in my hands. So you got a vision for this, you do it. And I grabbed it and the car was there and we got it on three takes. The biggest trouble isn't between you and I though. It was getting that guy to throw the freaking paper. Our guy at the end, Jonathan, the guy who's in the, the husband at the end of the piece is the one throwing the papers out the back and they could not throw these papers out the window to save their lives. They have a whole new respect for people that deliver newspapers and you can even see the drone right there. So we got that shot that set up all the pieces. Now we're set up. Now we just got to knock it down. We did one insert shot of the paper being thrown um, onto the driveway. 
It's and as our of, expert consultant on set. That's right. We had a technical advisor on this shoot, which is amazing. And what I mean by that is uh, that app. Uh, this is this is a guy from the company who can actually run that app. He knew how to you know make it work. He knew what to make it look like, like what what kind of shot we uh, not what kind of shot we needed, but what screen within the app we needed for it to make sense. Because he's the one that installs this stuff. He's the one that sells this stuff to customers, and he uh, helps people set it up. So he was there to help make sure that we got the right part of the app shown and that she's touching the right button and all of that. But he also was a great newspaper thrower, not from the car, but uh, from his just standing right there. And that's the shot you see in the piece of the newspaper landing. So the very next thing after that, it's time to get some tidy whities rolling. And uh, for this, we had a couple of lights. So in these pictures, it looks br much brighter than it is because he's exposing the photo properly. Mm -hmm. But to your eye, this is much darker. And uh, evidence that you can see how bright these lights are, these house lights, in, p in pure daylight, you would not see that. Those would just look like they were turned off even when they were on. Yeah. Um, but because he's, he's cranking the ISO or whatever, the sky looks bright. It was not bright like that. It was actually much darker than that. So these uh, 120Ds, you might say like, well, out in the daytime, that ain't going to do nothing. Trust me, they were adding a little bit of fill and a little bit of hair light on some of these shots, which you'll see coming up. They definitely were uh, a huge help. So you see he's he's half disrobed here, and there he's full disrobed. So there I am. I'm using the Jiyun Crane, an A7S II, and a 35-millimeter lens. I've got my small HD focus monitor, and I've got the focus – yeah, I've got the focus uh, – module on there so I can pull focus right from the handle and you see Jonathan back there adding a little bit of shape you can see it is adding a little bit of shape on his head and also there's this light over here which you do see in the the shot so it's motivated which I always like there he is to bend over the paper we've got our other character moving in I'm going quickly but hey follow along guys because you're a filmmaker you want to be a filmmaker all right grow a pair okay so Moving along, moving along. So we did a couple of takes of this. I'm walking along, trying to make sure my my gait is good, my stride is good. I'm not bouncing up and down because you know that's the one axis the crane's not gonna not gonna cover. We've got her coming up, and I think usually I follow the the method of getting a master shot that covers the entire script for a scene. So they come out and they do all their lines and. I want to make that shot work as long as possible before I do my first cut. And in this piece, um, coming from the master shot, which is him walking down here, let's see how long I actually made it. I only made it to the first line. But, Sir? but let's yeah. talk a little bit about why that's important. Because this sets up the geography of our entire scene right here. He's coming from his house. She's coming up. We know where every single character is in space right here. Everything the viewer needs to know is here. And that's it. That's very important. Um, you know, sometimes you see pieces that don't make much sense, but boom, look. Yeah. To get the viewer grounded. Brings us right in. Then we go in for our insert of the paper and look now when we do this shot reverse shot, we know where everybody is. She's across from him and we even have another wide here, even further kind of selling the arrangement. I'll kind of go over this shot reverse shot just a little bit. Um, our lead actress, she's always left facing right. And we maintain the 180 degree rule. So when we come around, he's going to be right facing left. And that continuity is paramount. You must have that. You have your original shot showing the audience exactly where the characters exist in space, what space they're in, where they are in relation to each other. So that way, when we cut into the tights where you can't quite see where they're at, you know, the audience already has that context. Their brain remembers and they don't question it. Um, so when we're doing these, same thing. He's right, she's left, always. Unless there's some kind of shot where it changes and the audience gets to see it change, we cannot break that boundary. And even in the wide shot, of course, it's going to be she's left, he's right. So um, without beating that dead horse any further. Well, there is something we have to look at on the wide shot. So what you're talking about is the actor who's actually the owner of this house here. He, he was going to actually be the guy in the whitey tidies at one point. There it is. And uh, his wife wouldn't let him. So we snuck him in anyway. This is him in the newspaper article. As we told you in prior episodes, this actor is a local entertainer. He does uh, comedy shows. He does magic shows. He DJs. So he's out in the community doing stuff. And at some point, um, he was 
featured in a newspaper article with this photo. So we said, hey, let's put you in as an Easter egg. So there he is. He made it in. And let's go to the wide shot. You'll have to look dangerously close to um, nether region of our actor, but there's Michael Van Ness right there, right where he would like to be. Uh, um, but back to the piece. Um, there's our continuity. So that maintains throughout. They they have their little dialogue. And their, the rest is insert shots. So we have an insert, insert shot of him picking up the paper. We have an insert shot of... The grass with the brown spots, which we're going to have to talk a little bit about that as well. And then we have an insert shot of a phone right here. Now, <clears throat> I think we should go through some more of the behind the scenes of how you set up the dialogue right here. The shot reverse shot. Okay. With maybe, the lighting. Maybe if you have some, oh, some light. Yeah, let's go. So we have a lot of behind the scenes because that was where the majority of the shoot was focused. All right. So here you go. We've got a 120D up here with a Fresnel attachment. We've got it gelled kind of tungsten-y because this is kind of around sunrise time. We really wanted to have that sunrise kind of feel. And the establishing shot that shows the houses kind of showed like some yellow light hitting the houses. So we're maintaining that. So if you look here at this behind the scenes photo and then we go to the piece, we can kind of see the effect of that light mm -hmm. right here. So to anybody, right there on her hair. so if anybody happened to be on Facebook and said that those one one twenty Ds don't do anything out in the daytime in your face right there, just kidding. Thanks for your comment. We love you. Because otherwise um, she'd be in shadow. We there. did have somebody on Facebook who, uh, in one of the film groups, said, "Well, surely those one twenty Ds can't be doing anything outside." Well, look, that's it right there. It's just giving her that little bit of shape, and we did the same thing when we set up the reverse shot. You see a little bit of it on his hair right there. It is subtle. But it is there. You can see a little bit of it. Hers coming on to him. Um, but it's really just about, you know, we're out there. And then there there's another 120D also filling filling her in. Let's go back. So a lot of this is just like the nice soft cloud cover we had. But there is a 120D off to the left here kind of adding uh, some fill. And, you know, I A-beat it. And it's definitely... It's definitely raising the skin tones up a little bit. It's definitely softening her out. Well, you can actually see the hard shadow a little bit from it if you look on her chest, her upper chest. Oh, right, yeah, right here. Yeah. Yep, you're right. So that's... The definitely thing. making a difference. It's definitely making a difference. Now, would it have made a difference on a full sunny day at 12 o'clock? Yeah, no. It, yeah, no, not really. But it did make a difference here. And like I said, these, you know, we're we're pushing the ISO. It's darker than it appears in real life. Um, so the sun hadn't even, you know, that's this. If you have any idea what the sun is actually doing, this is it coming from between the houses. But it's nowhere near even high enough to be coming over the tops of these houses yet. No. It's just peeking through between. But I like this good texture back there. And. uh Another thing that these the 120Ds filling in do, even if it just raises their level just a little bit, well, that's a little bit lower we can run the ISO, and that's a little bit less chance we're going to blow out these this sky here. And we didn't. This is this is actually not blown out. Um, if we we're shooting at a higher f-stop, we would see some detail in the clouds here. And I don't think we weren't shooting completely wide open. But we were shooting pretty open, but I still wanted it to be like I wanted this to be an environment behind them. I didn't want them to be on like you know a complete Gaussian blurred out. Right, you can't. No, you can tell context. that's a house. That's a house. And the only time that we had to stop down was these this early shot because we had her coming in. So we do make a transition from here to here where we actually open up the aperture. So you see background elements are in focus and then they're not. But um, if, if, if you want to believe that I had some artistic vision for that, I can spin it that way. You see, what I wanted to do was this is still an impersonal situation. He hasn't acknowledged her yet. Oh, but now she's got his attention. Now he's focused in. Now we're in the conversation. The outside world no longer matters. So, yeah, I totally meant to do that. It was artistic. That's why I did that. Just so you know. Um, I often wonder when I see uh, behind the scenes videos where uh, about movies and stuff where they talk about the cinematography and how they did it. I wonder how much of that was spun after the fact. They're like, oh yeah, that was 
that was artistic, but it does work. Um, when, when stuff like that happens or you do something like that and it doesn't work, well then obviously there's no way to spin it, but here it does work because now we're in a more intimate conversation between two people. He's now acknowledged her. The background goes out of focus. The audience is brought into these close ups, and, uh, the world kind of now revolves around them. What do you, what say you Trevor? Yeah. That 2.5 makes a lot more sense. And obviously we're trying to draw the attention. That's our job anyway, is to focus on certain elements and be still be able to provide context. So I think it works great. I know we had a conversation about that at one point artistically, because I thought the background starts to become distracting. If you have that F stop at F eight for too long. Well, look, this is a great image. The 120D filling her in, the hair light. I mean, I'm, you know, to to get out there early before the light was too much and get this image, you know, that's what we were fighting against. And that's some of the stress of the day was we knew that it was only, the sun was only going to come up more or something else or something worse was going to happen, which actually started to threaten to rain shortly after the shoot. So, yeah. Our last shot was in the rain. Uh, Yeah, it was. So that you want to get this brown spot shot out of the way. This, yeah, let's just do it. It's looming over our heads. Um, so for those of you that don't know, these uh, this was a shot of just plain grass, perfectly green grass. And I just rolled about 30 seconds of footage in 4K of the grass on a tripod. And then I came in and I masked out, masked, masked out these sections of grass and color color corrected them to be brown. So this is totally VFX here, if you want to call it that, or at the, if you want to be fancy, you call that VFX. If you want to be honest, it was me masking out some sections of grass and turning it brown. But it had to be done on a tripod because we couldn't have these floating around. And then the motion is added. So we shot in 4K. This little pan is added in post. But you know what? It's him looking. Yeah, the shot is connected into the real world by him taking a look over his shoulder. So he, he's looking uh, from left to right. So then when he looks down here, from left to right. Same motion. Yep, and it ties it into the world nicely. And then we're coming back out of that, back to her um, being the nosy neighbor. She played the part perfectly, which, like I said, podcast listeners will get to hear a little bit of her philosophy on how she did this, how she got the motivation for her character, the inspiration for that. We went deep into deep into it. We have brown spots, and then I called East Coast Irrigation. Now, let's talk oh, about this. we got to talk about this. So, if you notice, this shot is out of focus at the beginning. <laughs> and it comes into focus. This was not a take. Now, why is that? Why was it out of it focus? It was out of focus because I was I was setting up the camera. I hit hit record, and I said, okay, Jesse, I'm just going to do a quick test here and uh, just hang tight. And I was, I was just looking. I was checking over some things. I was looking at the image, and I was racking focus because I hadn't really called action or any of that yet. So this was not a take, but his facial expression was so hilarious that I had to put it in there. Despite having a little out of focus, I called East coast irrigation. <laughs> they took care of and obviously she's not delivering any lines there. She's just standing there. This is the audio from, from her close up. Just a natural, just, you hadn't even called action. No, just a just, natural expression. It's early in the morning. I don't know if, I, I don't even think he's looking at her. I think he's looking over my shoulder. I think like you might be saying something to him like, hey, just, uh, just so you know, I don't, I don't, I have no idea. But he's like, <laughs> we, we laughed for an hour when he found this. I said, I said, Trevor, this isn't one of his actual performances. This is just him. And when I saw it. I saw it and I said, oh man, that reminds me of the dude, the big Lebowski, yeah. just being like a nosy neighbor coming over here, trying to tell you what to do so early in the morning. You don't even care. And she's just like, he's just going, just looking through her. Right. So let's talk about, um, so I said, too bad we can't use it. The shot, the shot's out of focus. And there's actually a little bit more, like he's licking his lips right before this and it's, it's too out of focus. And I said, well, too bad we can't use it. It's out of focus. But you said, well, let's just, you know, let's put it there for now. And then as we had people come through and watch kind of the dailies, everybody was cracking up. And then I guess we just decided, like, well, what's more important, that the shot's a little out of focus or that the piece is funny and good and connects with people? And obviously that is more important. So it comes into focus pretty quick. It's not too bad. And, uh, yeah, we decided it's more important to make people laugh than if the shot's 100% in focus. And it's only out of focus for – Yeah, you really can't tell because when it cuts to it – your eyes haven't even adjusted. No. So, yeah, you don't even notice it's out of focus. So I'm glad we used it. 
And then these are some of his real performances. Like, they're pretty good. He, he has a good one right here when he kind of looks at his lawn. <laughs> Don't worry, my husband, he had brown spots, and then I called East Coast Irrigation. <laughs> they took care of everything, and now I can water my lawn right from my phone. So, yeah, I got all these takes. I got a, a, a shot, her delivering all these lines from this side. I got some reactions from him because he has no lines. And we stitched it all together. And uh, at first, you know, the way you do when you make something, I was looking at it. I thought it was complete crap. It's like I hated it. Um, but that's because I'm seeing every edit I made. I'm seeing everything I did. So I put it down for a couple of days. Um, we shot some weddings, came back, looked at it, and I got to see it with fresh eyes, the way somebody would see it who's never seen it before. And I cracked up. I got it. I was also reading the positive um, reviews we've been getting on it, and now I feel pretty good about it. You know, there's always things that I wish I could do over or things that I wish could be better, but uh, that's the case with everything. You know, we, you watch a Hollywood movie that you're going to find little mistakes. So we can't beat ourselves up too bad about these things. And the client is extremely happy with it. And Trevor, I feel like I've done 90% of the talking. Today. You have, you have. And, um, my opinion on this piece is, like I said, I had a lot of fear and doubt and anxiety with it all being exterior, but it is now my favorite piece. I know we've done a lot where there's been heavy command of the light in the environment, and they were our concepts to start, or I should say your concepts to start, that we brought to light just finding the right customer, the right end client to use the concept on. And this one wasn't that way. But it officially has become my favorite piece because the outside, the environment, the challenges that we faced with it, and then how you shot the dialogue and the way the story is pulled together has made it my favorite. I really like it. And I'm excited because this is our first piece that will actually end up on normal television, cable television. And so we had to live within some confines in order to make that happen. It hasn't gone on TV yet. But uh, I'm really excited about what we were able to accomplish on this one. And every shoot we go to and every project we put together from the planning to the pitching to the shooting to the editing and ultimately delivery, we learned so much. And uh, I felt like even with this one, there were so many things that uh, we, we've we continued to push our game up on. And, and it did excite us. And also made it more obvious that we need to step up some of our audio game. And um, I know I've mentioned learned. that in a few other ones. Yeah. And that's two things. Learning where and how to attach some of these lavaliers. Probably practicing. Just practicing. Just putting audio on people and letting them move around and listen to the outcome of, of kind of how those are attached. And then investing in some really true professional um, shotgun boom overhead type setups which we're still missing that boom pole, by the way. I don't know if it's oh, surfaced yeah. anywhere. But. Well, I'll have to keep looking. But, um, yeah, I mean, the more and more we do this, the more and more we learn that it's a journey, not a destination. You know, we see ourselves as these great big filmmakers. We're going to come out and film this commercial. It's going to be great. And it's not that. Every time we learn something, we walk a little bit further down the path. And lucky for you guys, we're taking you along for the journey. Yeah, so don't make the mistakes we made. You get to learn from us. Yeah, you're going to make the mistakes, trust me. But uh, that's all good. Um, so for those of you, again, those of you listening, this is a YouTube video available. If you want to see all the things we're talking about, you can come over to YouTube and you can see the ad as we played it. You can see these great behind-the-scenes photos. And that goes the same for you, YouTube folks. You can go over, find the podcast, and... We'll try to keep it fresh. We'll try to make sure that the uh, that the the audio versions have a little bit of uh, extra content that's more audio based, and that the video, uh, the YouTube videos, obviously have their added uh, value in the fact that you can see what we're talking about. Just scrolling through these behind the scenes photos, Trevor, what do you have to tell these folks? Oh man, I, I do want to mention a few things. I would like to show two of the videos. Do you have those two videos queued up somewhere? Oh, see, this is good bonus material for you YouTube folks. Yeah, so there's... if you are, again, if you are a Facebook, all right, Facebook, if you are a podcast listener, I think oh, it might yeah. be time for you to come on over and see this. It's just live action of us on set. Okay, I have no idea what I'm about to watch here. I see, obviously, I'm here holding. I don't even remember, but. I'm here holding the camera. You're holding the boom. See what happens. Oh. Okay. So 
Um, when you move in, make sure you're still out in front of him a little bit because he kind of got in front of you. So just directing. Tell us a little bit about it. And you can hear the ambient sound too. I think that was kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. No, that's what it sounded like. Now we add ambient sound into the final piece so that way the cuts don't sit. You don't hear cuts. You never want to hear cuts. You just want to see cuts. Uh, and you, you know, even when you see them, your brain shouldn't really register them if you're just a casual viewer. Um, but yeah, no, I'm just kind of directing. She, um, this was the shot where she's going to put the phone out and he's going to kind of look, uh, kind of lean in and look at it. And, uh, again, the way you would do things sometimes in the real world, you would, you know, don't really work on screen. So I tell her like, don't lean in so much, just kind of, kind of motion leaning in, just kind of have that. Like a little in. tilt, yeah. Yeah, because on screen it's gonna be present, and um, she would she would kind of lean behind him, and her face would almost start to disappear behind him, or or their faces would be too close together, and it was just they just didn't look right to my eye. I mean, I'm looking at the monitor, and I'm you know I'm directing, I'm seeing things that I I like or I don't like, and uh, you know I just let the actors know that they're they're doing a fantastic job, and uh, you know let's try it maybe a little bit more like this, maybe a little bit more over over here, maybe a little bit. More right, right, yeah. And you have the, you can see there, well, and you can see them in the other shots that we're bringing the actors up on a similar level. She's on Apple Boxes. Yeah, and we had a little bit of a creative disagreement on that. I, I think she was a little too high, but uh, being able to fit them both in the oh, shot and fill the, the frame. Well, he's yeah. he's leaned over right here, but. Yeah, but um, I don't know. She looks kind of really tall. Well, you know what? She's the one with all the power and that's the position. <laughs> she's I, domineering. She is. She's the one, she's the one that she's already got East coast irrigation. This guy, he's in, he's not in the know. He's not in the know. So he had to be lower, dude. The other weather item that we were dealing with or variable was it was super humid. I mean, it's Florida summertime and that humidity alone can affect your lens, hair, makeup, people sweating, and she was walking, so you would think, okay, that's kind of fine. You know, she's walking. She might be a little sweaty, but uh, that was another element that we had to contend with. And then ultimately, this final shot, it was actually in the rain, and you can see the umbrella over the camera to get this very simple yeah. shot. And it was about to start raining harder, and the sprinklers are coming on, so it wouldn't make any sense for him to be running away in the rain. Like, well, he's already in the rain. What the heck? So you can't see the rain in the shot, luckily. You see the sprinklers coming on, but it was uh, it was about to happen, and we ran across the street. This is only right across the street, actually, from the other location. But uh, we ran right across there and got the shot. And this actor was cast only the night before because we had a dropout and we had to find somebody. And it ended up being great because um, his uh, he was a little bit more athletic than the actor we had planned to come out. So he as he jumps away, it's just hilarious. We were we were we just fell about the place laughing when we saw him do it. I, I ruined the first take because I was laughing and I was holding the camera and, and I couldn't hold it enough to stop shaking. That's not the first time that's happened to me where I'm filming and it's just so funny. I laugh and ruin the shot. Um, so maybe I'll gain better control as we go, but probably not. So it's always going to be take two or three for us. You're going to hear me laugh. Oh my goodness. So, uh, and just, uh, for those, um, technology junkies or those that just like cool things, this shot was got on a one, was got on a one wheel. Yeah. He's running on a the... one wheel and he just had the a seven three just holding it. So there wasn't a stabilizer. He's just riding on the a seven. It's just, yeah, it's just behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so, but I like that, you know, it shows like how we're having fun. We're laughing. So yeah, I definitely put that at the beginning. Cause I think that people need to know. They yeah. need to know right up front that we're a fun group of people. And message us on Facebook because, you know, uh, if you are if you live local to the central Florida area, we might be out shooting in a location near you. If you message us, we might invite you to come out. I don't know. Yeah. You can have some fun with us. Trevor, where where are we at with this? So I'm hungry. Yeah, I know you I are. I want some pride we got a few more things we got to check off the list okay, here. Okay, what do you got? We already mentioned the podcast, the Facebook group, Check Two Studios. Check us out there be a huge uh we really appreciate it if you guys would rate and subscribe send us feedback jump into the facebook group tell us what you think uh there is one thing i wanted to mention our documentary that we went through in volume 10 or uh episode 10 was just officially selected in a local um 
Film Festival. So we'll have more news for you on that. We're excited. The two same day edits that Austin did this week. Let us know. Do you want to know more about how we pull off same day edits? Or do you just want to see commercial and corporate work? Just commercial and corporate work, please. Don't kill Austin's me. Austin's trying to quit same day edits altogether no. because well, it's just anybody insane. anybody would want to quit after the weekend I've had. The second wedding was amazing. The first one was a little bit touch and go there. Well, a lot of bit touch and go there. Yeah. Um, but that's that's a that's a story for another day, and I'm just going to leave it right there. Um, if you guys do want to hear about that, I'm voting no, but hey. Well, you guys just let us know. We need, we, a, we need to hear yeah. what you guys want to know more about, and uh, we're looking forward to it. And here I am talk frozen to me, again. Talk to me in a week. Trevor's frozen. He, no, you're not. You're good. Um, you're just... Mr. Freeze is up in here. Cool potty. <laughs> okay, so um, where are we at? Are we out of here? Are we out of here? I, I hate here. to be pushing to get out of here, but I'm so hungry. I want some Crattermans, which you can learn about in volume... Eight? I don't seven? Know, I don't remember. Trevor, it has been a pleasure filming Brown Spots with you. Trevor, I think you know what they need to do. What do they need to do? They need to shoot first. Ask questions later. That's right.